For more than 34,000 men and women, their home and their livelihood is found in Alabama's soil. Agriculture leads to one billion in statewide exports each year. Alabama is one of the top three states in the country for chicken and peanut production. Tonight, I go in depth with the Calhoun County family for the first in a three part series showing just what it takes to be an Alabama farmer. Look at this field and you may see dirt and grass. But Daniel Trantham, he sees something more. I've been in love with it since I, as far back as I can remember. Trantham didn't choose to be a farmer. He was born into it. When I was about eight years old though, I got to rake hay for the first time by myself. And at that point, I was hooked. I'd say what I love the most is uh, you know, putting a, putting a seed in the ground and then watching that seed go all the way to maturity and get to harvest that plant at the, in the fall. Now this third generation farmer is planting more than ever. Last month it was corn, now it's cotton. Trentham Farms started in 1972. Now it has a thousand acres, including wheat and soybeans. They not only grow it, they sell corn and feed directly to customers at their store, a method many other farmers began taking advantage of during the pandemic. This year, I'm planting an additional 150 acres of corn just because of demand. With those shortages brought, you know, that really scared people and they really want to know where their products come from. And if now they've learned that they can buy those products locally, that's created a demand and, and farmers are meeting those needs. It's also one way they've tried to withstand rising nationwide inflation, which has hurt what are often thin margins for Alabama farmers. Shipping is another cost each farm must manage. This one, operates its own fleet of 175 trucks, which haul chickens and feed across the southeast. Trantham makes it a point to bring local children to their farm to experience this life, which helps create more than one in every five jobs within Alabama. Everything doesn't just come from the grocery store magically. It gets there somehow, so we just try to go through the process with them of, of what we're doing in our fields, what those products are and what those products make, and then where they go from there. 97% of all farms in America are family owned. The Tranthams is no different. Daniel's father, uncle, and cousins all work here too. As for his wife, Carla. Like I wanted to move to a big city. Um, not ever in my life did I think I would end up the next town over being a farm wife. <laughs> now she runs the payroll for the entire farm. You wear so many different hats. I mean, sometimes it is. Um, you know, taking the kids to the field and letting them spend some time with dad, especially during, you know, planting and harvest. I mean, we, we try to go out as much in the afternoons as we can to see him. It's what her husband believes is the secret to so many farmers success in Alabama. Uh, family farms have to stay intact. Uh, that to me, that's the only way I see farming as a whole to, to be able to continue. In January, the Tranthams were named the nation's top young farm family by the American Farm Bureau Federation. Daniel's greatest joy is when his children join him at work, which often also happens to be in their own front yard. They fight over, you know, who's going to get to ride with me or, or who's going to work with me, you know, on this day. And, you know, it's just something that it really makes my heart happy to see them care about it, you know, as much as I did when I was their age. Consider this. Each U.S. farmer is responsible for feeding 155 people nationwide. Farming is, of course, a seven-day-a-week job, which lasts just 12 months out of the year. We plan to visit with the Tranthams again this summer and again during harvest season.